Hey guys, Taylor here from Beaten Jeans, and I am going to take you through my process of a liver cleanse. This is this is like the worst thing ever. Ugh. This is really the worst thing I've ever done. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Sorry. If you have gallstones, I'm so sorry. So, a couple of months ago, I began having these pains in my side, um, and, and it only happened when I would go to bed at night. I would lay in bed, I'd be watching TV, and then suddenly in the right side, like right below my rib cage, I would get a super sharp pain. And on a scale of one to 10, it is like an eight, nine, 10. It is excruciating, <clears throat> pardon me. Even to the point where I can't breathe, I can't talk. I can't move, it hurts so bad, and the pain generally lasts about 20 minutes. Um, actually, it's like 20 minutes on the dot, it's so weird. Um, and then the pain goes away. And I looked it up and it said online that it could be a gallstone. And it said that it could be related to what you're eating. So I started keeping track of what I was putting in my mouth and Generally, it was not even anything fattening, which they say can create the gallstones. I would have like a salad or spring rolls for dinner, soup, something that's not really fatty. So I thought, well, this isn't gallstones. So I called my doctor, I got in for an appointment and he referred me over to get an ultrasound I went and had my ultrasound done and the ultrasound came back clear. So I was like, what is going on? And the doctor said, if this persists, we'll go in there and do exploratory surgery, which is not something that I want to sign up for. I did some more digging and I found that sometimes ultrasounds won't show gallstones. So I found a new doctor, a holistic doctor who told me about doing a gallstone cleanse, which is also called a liver cleanse. And I am going to try it. So I've been watching videos online on how to do it. I ordered a book that explains super in depth what to do step by step. So I'm gonna take you through this process with me and I'm praying that that's what this is, that I have gallstones and that I can remove them safely from my body by doing this cleanse. So this cleanse is a seven day cleanse. So I am doing this on January 1st with Polly and my husband, Austin. They both decided to join me because apparently everybody has gallstones and gallstones are just like these tiny little hard balls that get stuck in your gallbladder and they create a host of issues for your body. They can cause fatigue, they can cause depression, anxiety, uh, they can lower your immune system. So I feel like the benefits for everybody, it's worth a shot because it's really a harmless cleanse to do for your body. The first five days of this cleanse, you are supposed to eat totally plant-based, completely plant-based, which is easy for me because that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. You also drink 100 ounces of water each day, which is what I generally aim for anyway. You're supposed to sweat every single day and I have been loving my new Peloton. I use it every single day and I sweat a ton, so that's not gonna be a problem. Um, you're also su supposed to drink 32 ounces of fresh pressed apple juice every day. They say that you can purchase apple juice at the store, but since I have a juicer, I'm just going to be fresh pressing the apples 
um, for myself every day. And they tell you to drink the apple juice at room temperature throughout the day. So you don't have to chug the 32 ounces of apple juice right away. You can consume it throughout the day, which I'm actually looking forward to. Um, so no animal products, no processed food, no sugar. And then, so that that's five days. And then on day six, you wake up and you have a light breakfast. And then for lunch, you have a very light lunch of steamed vegetables and rice. And then you stop eating at 1230. The only thing you can have after 1230 on day six is water. And then I believe it's six o'clock at night. You have like a mixture of Epsom salt and water. Now the Epsom salt, you can't just go out and buy any Epsom salt. It has to be a specific kind of Epsom salt. And I will show you that later. And then you also drink a concoction of fresh pressed grapefruit or lemon juice and olive oil. Mmm, doesn't that sound good? Oof. It kind of brings me back to like <laughs> when I was trying to induce my babies and I would drink castor oil with Ari, I drank castor oil and I didn't know it was rancid. So like oil just freaks me out now. Um, so I'm not looking forward to that, but they say on day seven, you wake up in the morning and you pass the stones. So I'm super excited to be able to see like to be able to see that elimination in your body, I feel like it's gonna be so satisfying and so worth it. And I can't wait to get started. So I will get into depth about the specifics of everything throughout each day. I'm gonna take you through my day of eating and um, especially during the later process of the Epsom salt and oil and, and fresh juice. So, okay, I'm gonna take you shopping with me now. Let's go. Oh, and one other thing is for the first couple days, um, Austin and I will be at our cabin. So I'll be filming in both places if you're wondering. All right, so let's go to the grocery store. All right, I'm just leaving Trader Joe's and I spent $139 on mostly vegetables. I bought six bags of apples. Um, some snacks for the kids and I've already prepped out all my meals so I basically bought everything for the week but it was funny because everyone inside was like whoa you have so many apples I was like yep I'm doing a gallbladder cleanse and it's TMI to go any further than that but yeah I figure one bag of apples is about the equivalent to 32 ounces of juice. So yeah, $139 is not bad for five days worth of food. So here's everything I got. And of course, since I'm doing fresh pressed apples, make sure you get organic for sure. Especially if you're gonna leave the peel on. These are my favorite from there. Um, more apples, hummus, avocados, lentils. These things are so good in lieu of grounds for tacos and stuff. Or in spaghetti. My kids love this cereal. And then just a bunch of good stuff in here. The guy said, I was like, that's so cheap. I got so much for $139. And he said, well, when you buy real food, it's a lot cheaper. And that is the truth.
okay, so this is Ari and Eliza, my two kids, and they helped me make my apple juice today. I am on day three of the liver cleanse, and I just wanted to kind of fill you in on how I was feeling. My husband, Austin, is also doing the liver cleanse with me. Cheers. Cheers. I just finished juicing our 32 ounces for the day. And I have been really good. We've been eating completely plant-based for the last two days, which is what I do normally. Um, the one thing that I have been slipping on is drinking 100 ounces of water because I kind of find it hard to drink 100 ounces of water while I'm also drinking apple juice. But um, I'm gonna try and keep on track of that today. Um, so for the last couple of days, we've had, um, we had tofu scramble the first morning. And then for dinner that night, I made a green bean stir fry. Yesterday we had smoothies. And then for dinner, we had a vegan Alfredo with soy curls and green chili and steamed broccoli. I'm sorry, roasted broccoli. And then today I believe I'm going to make minestrone soup for dinner. Or as the kids know it, magic bean soup. You guys love magic beans too. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm feeling really good. Um, I haven't really experienced anything yet, but that's because I'm used to eating plant-based. So I just wanted to fill you in on how I'm feeling, which is great, pretty normal. All right, see you on day four. Hey guys, it is day six and I am at the end of my liver cleanse. Today is the day I have a light breakfast, um, a lunch with steamed vegetables and rice, and then after 12.30, I cannot eat anything. The only thing I can have is water. So I'm gonna make my shake this morning um, and my apple juice. I also get to have apple juice today. And I'm gonna try and keep super busy so that my mind isn't focused on food. Um, so I'm just gonna make myself my traditional morning smoothie. And I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can kind of stay full. Cause I'm very worried about being hungry. I hate being hungry. So I'm gonna make this and yeah, we're gonna get the day going. We did it, and I feel really good, so it's awesome. Here is my meal for the rest of day six. Some steamed veggies, rice, the rest of my apple juice, lots of water, and then it is 12 o'clock, so I've got, um, let's see what does it say? Stop eating at 12.30. So I've got 30 more minutes to consume my lunch. And then that's it for me for the rest of the day. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm taking my first serving of Epsom salt. It is 5.15. Um, excuse the television on in the background. I am going to heat up just a little bit of water. I've just made it lukewarm. That way the magnesium will dissolve better. Um, tried it without heating the water and the magnesium didn't dissolve. And I looked it up. If you have lukewarm water, then it will dissolve fully. So I'm just gonna measure out six ounces. I have this mason jar, which has six ounces marked out on it. And then I'm gonna take one tablespoon of Epsom salt, and I'm gonna add it in here. I'm gonna stir it up real good. I'm gonna let this dissolve. I used to think that Epsom salt was like salt, but it's actually not. Um, it doesn't taste salty at all. So, it is mostly dissolved. And make sure you buy the uh, Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. Don't buy just generic Epsom salt. Make sure it is magnesium 
sulfate. The other type of Epsom salt is toxic to drink and it does taste salty. Okay, so it looks like this is fully dissolved. So here we go. That was terrible. No. You, they say you can drink a little bit of water to wash it down. Not too much. And then I think you have to wait like 10 or 20 minutes before you drink any more water. Um, so in two more hours, I will have my second dose of Epsom salt. And I should be going to the bathroom a lot between now and then. So this should be fun. All right, so I have yet to um, have a bowel movement, but it has been two hours since my first dose of Epsom salt, and I'm about to have my second here. Um, six ounces of water, one tablespoon of Epsom salt. I already dissolved it in warm water earlier, so it's ready to go. And cheers. Oh, it's horrible. I don't know how to explain it. It's like bitter. Oh, all right. My stomach is really starting to rumble now. And my hunger pains have passed. I'm no longer hungry. I'm just sort of in anticipation of what the night is gonna bring, um, but I'm hopeful it's gonna work. But my stomach is definitely just right after that second dose. It's starting to rumble. I'm gonna sit down, see if anything happens. Feel me, why? So Austin, you've taken two doses of Epsom salt mm. and have you been able to pass a bowel movement? Not yet. <laughs> So what do we do if you don't pass a bowel movement? What's the next step? I don't know. <laughs> An enema. <laughs> Austin might have to use the dreaded apparatus. <laughs> I, however, have passed five bowel movements in the last two hours, and I'm about to take my grapefruit juice, so stay tuned for that. Alright, I'm sorry, I started drinking my castor or my, my castor oil. It reminds me of castor oil because that's what I drink to induce my children. Um, I'm drinking grapefruit juice and olive oil and I have some honey because they say that if it doesn't go down smoothly, you can chase it with honey. So I think I'm going to put a little bit of honey into the spoon right here because it's seriously disgusting. Okay. Oh God, it's really bad. It's worse than I thought it was gonna be. So they say to drink this in under five minutes. Ugh. It's so bad. Oh. I'm spitting out grapefruit seeds. It's one of the worst things I've ever done. It's a half a cup of olive oil. Okay, so after I do this, I'm gonna brush my teeth and you have to immediately lay down and you can't talk. I don't know why, I don't know what the science is behind all of it, but so I'm gonna stop filming after I drink this and I'll fill you in on the morning on how my night goes. It's like the worst thing ever. Oh, this is really the worst thing I've ever done. I'm not exaggerating. I'm sorry. If you have gallstones, I'm so sorry. You're gonna have to do this. It's terrible. 
It's that oil. It's the oil. It's the oil. When I was pregnant with Ari, I used castor oil to induce him and I drink rancid castor oil and it just takes me back to that. Okay. I'm gonna, mm, I'm gonna plug my nose. I'm gonna see if that helps. So I'm not gonna set you guys down. Here we go. Ugh, I almost threw it up. <clears throat> if you can do this, you can do anything. I'm almost done. I'm almost done and I'm gonna have my honey. I'm gonna brush my teeth. You're not supposed to drink water for two hours after you do this, so. Please let this help me. Please let this pass my gallstones. <sighs> who thought of this? Like, who thought of it? Seriously. This is insane. I'm done. I'm done. Here's my honey. My treat. The honey. Made it all worth it. All right, so I'm gonna go brush my teeth and then I have to lay down and I can't talk anymore. Hopefully, when I talk to you tomorrow, I will have passed my stones. But I have to drink more Epsom salt in the morning, actually. So. Okay, that's done. Oh, God. It was brutal. But I did it. It's done. Okay, good night, everybody. Good morning, guys. So, I had, like, the worst night of my whole life. I woke up at 1.30, and I threw everything up. And... I couldn't control it. I was trying to hold it in as long as I could. Um, I don't know. I, and then I got on my phone and I was researching, like, if throwing up is okay. Um, they say that if you have a lot of gallstones you have to pass, that toxicity of it passing through the ducts can make you feel nauseous. But I didn't see anything about vomiting. But my nausea was extreme. It was like, 10 on the scale of 1 to 10. And I feel so awful this morning. Almost flew like, um, I want to chug water. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to. And I'm going to take my second dose of Epsom salt right now. But I'm in the pantry because we have family in town. Um, so I'm trying to be quiet. But anyway, I just woke up and... I'm gonna go drink Epsom salt, which is the last thing I wanna do right now. So, yeah. All right, this is my last glass of Epsom salt and I'm so grateful to be done with this. So it is 10 o'clock in the morning and I have been successful at passing my stones. I've gone about six times now and 
If you don't want to see graphic images, I suggest that you stop the video here. Skip ahead a little bit because I'm about to show you some pictures of my stones. Now, I am not feeling very good. I feel really run down, pretty nauseous still. And I am not really hungry, which is surprising. I'm trying to drink water, so I just poured myself a big glass of water. And Austin just made us some fresh juice. This is watermelon, orange, and kale juice. And I'm hoping that maybe just having a little substance in my stomach will help me feel better. But man, that was a really, <laughs> that was a really hard night. And I just hope that I do not have that gall bladder attack again. I hope that this does it. Oh, because I don't know if I could truly do it again. And I hate to scare people away from doing this. Um, my husband, Austin, had nothing, no symptoms like I did at all. Um, I don't know if I'm just sensitive or it's because I was kind of feeling a little ill. You know, I'm getting over a cold. I don't know if that intensified the feelings for me. But um, I just had a pretty hard experience with this. And maybe because I had so much toxicity in my body that it could be affecting it more, affecting me more so. Um, but I'm so glad it's done. It's behind me and I still am going to the bathroom. I hope I'm done by one because I have doctor's appointment at one. But cheers to you guys and I will keep you posted through my whole journey.